Network Appliance, Inc. provides enterprise storage as well as data management software and hardware products and services. Based in Sunnyville, California, this company has strung together a pretty impressive record of growing earnings by an average of over 19% a year since 2002. They started paying their first dividend in 2014 with a relatively low payout ratio. However, they increased their dividend payout ratio dramatically in 2019. Yesterday, the company reported earnings and the stock fell almost 6%. As a result, this stimulated one analyst at Citigroup to say this was a buying opportunity. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer Software Tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation. And I've got a, a tech stock for you today in the uh, data storage business it's called Network Appliance, and it did report earnings yesterday, and earnings actually beat estimates. However, the company did cut their guidance. And as I'll show you here in a moment when I get into the fast graph, the company came off a very, really good year last year, and then they're expected to have a good year this year, but much more modest than they did last year. And that's really caused the stock price to fall dramatically. But yesterday, after reporting earnings, the company's price fell about 6%, and it's just about even today. So as one analyst at Citigroup said, this might be a great buying opportunity. So let's go ahead and look at it through the lens of fast graphs for you. All right, number one, you can see here that network appliance has grown earnings at 19% a year, but it's also been somewhat cyclical. It's a data storage company and data management software company, and you know it's a tech stock. It's, it's one of the leaders you know, it's triple B plus. It does have, you know, 66% debt to capital. The yield now is right at 3% per annum, the dividend yield. So that's one of the reasons I like it. They have a history of growing their dividend, although they did freeze it in 2021, you know, during the COVID issue, if you will. The company does have an April fiscal year. Their fiscal year ends April 20th. And, you know, they just reported earnings again yesterday. Normally, the market has put a premium valuation in the past coming into the recession of 2008. You know, the normal multiple in this stock has been about 25 historically. But that's always a misleading number because what it's comprised of was very high price earnings ratios back in, you know, 2001, 2, 3, and 4, and then very low PE ratios since the recession, actually since about 2012 or so. So if I shorten the time frame here dramatically, the stock has been trading at about a 15 PE. The actual normal PE calculates out at 14.45 and the fair value reference at 15 times earnings, which I agree. So the stock looks, you know, undervalued at those times. Now, keep one thing in mind that the valuation was very high in 2021, and now it's very low. So this would be a good opportunity to start looking at this stock. It's not as fairly valued as it was during COVID, I might point out, and perhaps not as fairly valued it was in 2016, when, you know, they had a pretty bad year where the P.E. ratio got down to 9.69. Today, it's trading at about 12.64, actually maybe slightly less than that on a blended P.E. because, again, the stock did drop almost 6% yesterday, and it's flat today. Analysts do expect the company to have modest growth for the next two years. The company has cut their guidance, but what FastGraphs is showing here is about the mid-range of their guidance, so it looks like a reasonable number. If we evaluate the company's analyst scorecard, we see that they've had a pretty good scorecard, even though they are somewhat but cyclical. But from time to time, they do miss earnings estimates. Recently, the only real time they missed estimates was during COVID. So, you know, I think we have to overlook COVID as a 100-year event type thing, if you will. Okay, so as I look at this company from a dividend perspective right now, you can see they started paying the dividend in 2014. Well, let's go ahead and look at performance. The dividend grew at a pretty good rate from 2014, you know, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And then in 2019, notice that they increased their dividend payout ratio quite a bit from about 21% to 35%. And then in 2020 and 2021, it was in the 40%, and it's around 37 or 8% last year. So the payout ratio has increased rather dramatically. The long-term dividend record growth rate has been very, very strong 
But again, that's a little bit of a misnomer because they did have this one huge dividend increase in 2019 when they dramatically increased their dividend payout ratio. As I like to say, the devil's always in the details. But nevertheless, the company has become a dividend payer and they have been growing their dividend relatively nicely. From a standpoint of dividend safety, if I look at it from a perspective of operating cash flow, the company's operating cash flow is covering the dividend and as well as free cash flow is covering the dividend. So I feel like the dividend's really safe. If I look at the company from a standpoint of EBITDA, the company looks extremely undervalued. Now let's shorten the time frame to give a more fair perspective because the growth rate has slowed down to double digit rates, but it still looks very inexpensive there. If I run it on sales, this might be one of the areas I'm a little concerned about. Sales growth is expected to slow for next year and still be about 8% or so for this year. And again, the guidance is still suggesting they're on track. So from a price to sales point of view, they're trading at about 2.3 times sales, which is well within their normal 2.41 times sales. So again, this would indicate a decent time to be investing in the stock. If we go look at it a little closer financially, we can go into the fiscal fitness. You know, as I already illustrated, free cash flow is covering the dividend. Operating cash flow has been growing. But that growth rate, I do want to point out, has slowed down somewhat in more recent years since 2014. The company has been buying back stock in recent years as the stock price has been cheap. So they are, you know, rewarding shareholders by anti-dilution, if you will, by buying back a little stock. And I think it's a good time to be doing that because their stock looks very inexpensive now. Operating cash flow is definitely greater than that income. Their sales revenue, as I mentioned, the growth rate hasn't been too stellar for the last you know decade or so it's averaged less than one percent but they are maintaining their sales so at least that's something that income growth has been about 4.47 percent their debt to equity has risen dramatically this company does grow by acquisitions and they've you know made a bunch of acquisitions here recently you can look that up when you're doing the research and check it out when you look at their margins you know the company has decent gross margin of around 66 percent their operating margin is around 19 percent and our net margin is around 14 percent that was for last year if i change this to quarterly and see how they're doing here more recently we see that their margins are holding up so i consider that a positive return on assets let's look at it from a standpoint of yearly they do have strong returns on assets about nine and a half percent the return on equity is actually increased here in recent years and is strong at a very high number and the return on invested capital has been strong as well. So all in all, this company looks pretty fiscally fit. You know, we can also go in here and look deeper. We can look at things like, you know, go into the fund graph section of fast graphs and go ahead and look at ratios because I'm really looking at valuation. I think the real story here is valuation. The stock has gotten cheap. Their enterprise value to EBITDA is a metric I like. It's about trading about the midpoint of normal valuation. So, you know, about 10 times enterprise value to EBITDA, I consider that to be attractive. So all in all, as I look at this company, I think it's one that I'm going to begin researching now and taking a hard look at to see whether it's worthy to be put in stock portfolios or not, especially those that are looking for income. In the days of high valuations on tech stocks, this might be a great opportunity to look at a stalwart like network appliances. Now, they do compete with you know a lot of the major firms out there. It is a very competitive market in this data storage area. You know, I think that's something that needs to be talked about. Zach's investment research gives their reasons to buy the stock. They say that it's expected to gain from the shift from traditional dedicated storage to shared storage and virtualized IT infrastructures. And the company is, according to Zach's, is gaining traction in the network attached storage, the NAS market. And enterprises are shifting to NAS primarily due to its easy deployment, according to Zach's. They're also gaining from robust growth in public cloud services, which recorded annual recurring revenues of $584 million in the first quarter of 2023. That was up 73% year over year. They also, you know, mentioned the adoption of Microsoft Azure. NetApp Files is a key catalyst for that. The company's partnerships with Alphabet's Google Cloud Platform and Amazon's Amazon Web Services are expected also to bolster adoption of its cloud and data services. Network appliances witnessing a higher demand for its flash-based solutions, according to Zacks. And they've also been, as I mentioned, mentioned earlier, active on the acquisition front. Recently, the company closed the acquisition of Cloud Checker. That was November of 2021. Uh, Filament in February of 2022. And Instacluster in May of 2022. 
Prior to that, they had purchased data mechanics in June of 2021 for an actual undisclosed sum. Data Mechanics is a management platform that enables clients to easily run Apache Spark. All these acquisitions are aimed at boosting its spot by network appliance portfolio. Networks Appliance acquired cloud services startup spot in July of 2020. So, you know, the company is taking action to maintain their growth and to continue to be competitive in the market. And according to Zach's management's execution has been favorable in recent times. As far as reasons to sell, they continue to acquire a large number of companies. That does improve their revenue opportunities, according to Zach's, but it also increases integration risk and also, you know, puts some goodwill on the balance sheet, et cetera. Zach's feels like they face stiff competition from bellwethers such as HP, Dell, IBM, and Oracle. And according to Zach's, you know, their competitors are revamping their product lines with faster and more efficient products. But technology is, is a very competitive market, in my opinion. They're heavily dependent on sales through indirect channels, value-added resellers, systems integrators, distributors, original equipment manufacturers, and strategic business partners, which according to Zach's accounted for 77% of their revenues in fiscal 2022. Therefore, Zach's feels that the loss of any key customer, retailer, or distributor could affect the company's overall results. They are talking about the company trading at a premium in terms of price to book, but I don't feel their price to book is actually too high. We can go into the financials again in fast graphs here, go into fund graphs and go ahead and look at the ratios and look at their price to valuation ratios and then go ahead and click on price to book value. And price to book value has actually come down with the stock price here in recent times, looking at it quarterly. It's, you know, price to book is around 19. That may be a little high, but I don't think it's excessively high for this company, you know, especially a company that's making all the acquisitions like that. So all in all, I think this company is worthy of a more comprehensive research effort. That's something I'm going to do. I'm going to take a look at it closely for both total return as well as income investment. Um, I think, you know, it has opportunities for both. Analysts are forecasting decent growth next year, but a much stronger recovery in 2025. So, you know, this would be a good time to be buying the stock. Their normal multiple of the last five years has been about 15.75, but historically, the companies also, as I showed you earlier, commanded higher normal multiples than that. But I like looking at it from the standpoint of, you know, multiple somewhere around 15 times earnings. I think that would be fair for this company and be consistent. And again, you can buy it today at 12 times earnings. So we've got a little bit of upside through P.E. ratio expansion as well. Long term growth expected to be about just under 8 percent. And I do like to check that against other sources. Let's see what Yahoo has to say. Analysts think it's going to grow for the next five years at about 9 percent. So that's pretty consistent. So all in all, I think this is good value you here, a good dividend, a good history, and you, know, you might want to take a closer look at network appliances. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGrass, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. Hope you enjoyed this video on network appliances and data storage. You know, with everything that's going on in the world and the internet and cloud storage, etc., you know, this is going to be, a, obviously, I think it's a, a opportunistic marketplace, very competitive, as I pointed out but I think the valuation makes it worth taking a closer look at. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, ring the bell, give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, take a look at Fast Graphs. What a marvelous way to evaluate stocks so easily and you know so efficiently with the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. Thanks for watching.